Song of Myself by Walt Whitman. Read by Alan Davis Drake. Section 1 I celebrate myself and sing myself, and what I assume you shall assume, for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. My tongue, every atom of my blood, formed from this soil, this air. Born here of parents born here from parents the same, and their parents the same. I, now thirty-seven years old, in perfect health, begin, hoping to cease not till death creeds and schools in abeyance retiring back a while sufficed at what they are but never forgotten i harbor for good or bad i permit to speak at every hazard nature without check with original energy section two Houses and rooms are full of perfumes. The shelves are crowded with perfumes. I breathe the fragrance myself and know it, and like it. The distillation would intoxicate me also, but I shall not let it. The atmosphere is not a perfume. It has no taste of the distillation. It is odorless. It is for my mouth forever. I am in love with it. I will go to the bank by the wood and become undisguised and naked. I am mad for it to be in contact with me. The smoke of my own breath, echoes, ripples, buzzed whispers, love root, silk thread, crotch and vine. My respiration and inspiration, the beating of my heart, the passing of blood and air through my lungs, the sniff of green leaves and dry leaves, and of the shore and dark-colored sea-rocks, and of hay in the barn. The sound of the belched words of my voice loosed to the eddies of the wind. A few light kisses, a few embraces, a reaching around of arms. The play of shine and shade on the trees as the supple boughs wag. The delight alone or in the rush of the streets, or along the fields and hillsides. The feeling of health, the full noon trill, the song of me rising from bed and meeting the sun. Have you reckoned a thousand acres much? Have you reckoned the earth much? Have you practiced so long to learn to read? Have you felt so proud to get at the meaning of poems? Stop this day and night with me, and you shall possess the origin of all poems. You shall possess the good of the earth and sun. There are millions of suns left. You shall no longer take things at second or third hand, nor look through the eyes of the dead, nor feed on the specters in books. You shall not look through my eyes either, nor take things from me. You shall listen to all sides and filter them from yourself. Section 3 I have heard what the talkers were talking, the talk of the beginning and the end, but I do not talk of the beginning or the end. There was never any more inception than there is now, nor any more youth or age than there is now, and will never be any more perfection than there is now nor any more heaven or hell than there is now. Urge and urge and urge, always the procreant urge of the world. Out of the dimness opposite equals advance, always substance and increase, always sex, always a knit of identity, always distinction, always a breed of life. To elaborate is no avail. Learned and unlearned feel that it is so. 
sure as the most certain sure, plumb to the uprights, well entreated, braced in the beams, stout as a horse, affectionate, haughty, electrical. I and this mystery here we stand. Clear and sweet is my soul, and clear and sweet is all that is not my soul. Lack one, lacks both, and the unseen is proved by the seen, till that becomes unseen and receives proof in its turn. Showing the best and dividing it from the worst age vexes age. Knowing the perfect fitness and equanimity of things while they discuss, I am silent, and go bathe and admire myself. Welcome is every organ and attribute of me, and of any man hearty and clean. Not an inch nor a particle of an inch is vile, and none shall be less familiar than the rest. I am satisfied. I see, dance, laugh, sing. As the hugging and loving bedfellow sleeps at my side through the night, and withdraws at the peep of the day with stealthy tread, leaving me baskets covered with white towels swelling the house with their plenty, shall I postpone my acceptation and realization and scream at my eyes, that they turn from gazing after and down the road, and forthwith cipher and show me to a cent exactly the value of one and exactly the value of two and which is a head section four trippers and askers surround me people i meet the effect upon me of my early life or the ward and city i live in or the nation the latest dates, discoveries, inventions, societies, authors old and new, my dinner, dress, associates, looks, compliments, dues, the real or fancied indifference of some man or woman I love, the sickness of one of my folks or myself, or ill-doing or loss or lack of money or depressions or exaltations. Battles, the horrors of fratricidal war, the fever of doubtful news, the fitful events. These come to me days and nights, and go from me again. But they are not the me myself. Apart from the pulling and hauling, stands what I am. Stands amused, complacent, compassionating, idle, unitary looks down is erect or bends an arm on an impalpable certain rest looking with side curved head curious what will come next both in and out of the game and watching and wondering at it backward i see in my own days where i sweated through fog with linguists and contenders I have no mockings or arguments. I witness and wait. Section 5 I believe in you, my soul. The other I am must not abase itself to you, and you must not be abased to the other. Loaf with me on the grass. Loose the stop from your throat. Not words, not music or rhyme I want, not custom or lecture, not even the best. Only the lull I like, the hum of your valved voice. I mind how once we lay such a transparent summer morning, how you settled your head athwart my hips and gently turned over upon me, and parted the shirt from my bosom bone, and plunged your tongue to my bare-stripped heart and reached till you felt my beard, and reached till you held my feet. Swiftly arose and spread around me the peace and knowledge that pass all the argument of the earth. And I know that the hand of God is the promise of my own, and I know that the Spirit of God is the brother of my own, 
and that all the men ever born are also my brothers, and all the women my sisters and lovers, and that the kelson of the creation is love, and limitless are leaves stiff or drooping in the fields, and brown ants in the little wells beneath them, and mossy scabs of the worm fence heap stones, elder, mullen, and pokeweed. Section 6 A child said, What is the grass? Fetching it to me with full hands. How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition, out of hopeful green stuff woven. Or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped, bearing the owner's name somewhat in the corners, that we may see and remark and say, Whose? Or I guess the grass itself is a child, the produced babe of the vegetation. Or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyph, and it means sprouting like broad zones and narrow zones, growing among black folks as among white, Canuck, Tuckahoe, Congressman, Cuff, I give them the same, I receive them the same. And now it seems to me the beautiful uncut hair of graves. Tenderly will I use you curling grass. It may be you transpire from the breasts of young men. It may be, if I had known them, I would have loved them. It may be you are from old people, or from offspring taken soon out of their mother's laps. And here you are the mother's laps. This grass is very dark to be from the white heads of old mothers, darker than the colorless beards of old men, dark to come from under the faint red roofs of mouths. Oh, I perceive after all so many uttering tongues, and I perceive they do not come from the roofs of mouths for nothing. I wish I could translate the hints about the dead young men and women, and the hints about old men and mothers, and the offspring taken soon out of their laps. What do you think has become of the young and old men? And what do you think has become of the women and children? They are alive and well somewhere. The smallest sprout shows there is really no death. And if ever there was, it led forward life, and does not wait at the end to arrest it, and ceased the moment life appeared. All goes onward and outward. Nothing collapses, and to die is different from what any one supposed, and luckier. Section 7 Has anyone supposed it lucky to be born? I hasten to inform him or her it is just as lucky to die, and I know it. I pass death with the dying and birth with the new-washed babe, and am not contained between my hat and boots, and peruse manifold objects, no two alike and every one good, the earth good and the stars good and their adjuncts all good. I am not an earth, nor an adjunct of an earth. I am the mate and companion of people all just as immortal and fathomless as myself. They do not know how immortal, but I know. Every kind for itself and its own, for me mine male and female, for me those that have been boys and that loved women, for me the man that is proud and feels how it stings to be slighted, for me the sweetheart and the old maid, and for me mothers and the mothers of mothers, for me lips that have smiled, eyes that have shed tears, for me children and the begatters of children. Undrape, 
you are not guilty to me, nor stale nor discarded. I see through the broadcloth and gingham, whether or no. And I am around, tenacious, acquisitive, tireless, and cannot be shaken away. Section 8 The little one sleeps in its cradle. I lift the gauze and look a long time and silently brush away flies with my hand. The youngster and the red-faced girl turn aside up the bushy hill. I, peeringly, view them from the top. The suicide sprawls on the bloody floor of the bedroom. I witness the corpse with its dabbled hair. I note where the pistol has fallen. The blab of the pave, tires of carts, slough of boot soles, talk of the promenaders. The heavy omnibus, the driver with its interrogating thumb, the clank of the shod horses on the granite floor. The slow sleighs, clinking, shouted jokes, pelts of snowballs. The hurrahs for popular favorites, the flap of the curtained litter, a sick man inside, born to the hospital. The meeting of enemies, the sudden oath, the blows and fall. The excited crowd, the policeman with his star quickly working his passage to the center of the crowd. The impassive stones that receive and return so many echoes. What groans of overfed or half-starved, who fall sunstruck or in fits. What exclamations of women taken suddenly who hurry home and give birth to babes. What living and buried speech is always vibrating here. What howls restrained by decorum. Arrests of criminals, slights, adulterous offers made, acceptances, rejections with convex lips. I mind them, or the show, or resonance of them. I come, and I depart. Section 9 the big doors of the country barn stand open and ready. The dried grass of the harvest time loads the slow-drawn wagon. The clear light plays on the brown, gray, and green, intertinged. The armfuls are packed to the sagging mow. I am here. I help. I came stretched to top of the load. I felt its soft jolts. One leg reclined on the other. I jump from the cross-beams and seize the clover and timothy, and roll head over heels and tangle my hair, full of wisps. Section 10 Alone far in the wilds and mountains I hunt, wandering amazed at my own lightness and glee. In the late afternoon, choosing a safe spot to pass the night, Kindling a fire and broiling the fresh-killed game, Falling asleep on the gathered leaves With my dog and gun by my side. The Yankee clipper is under her sky sails. She cuts the sparkle and scud. My eyes settle the land. I bend at her prow or shout joyously from the deck. The boatmen and clam-diggers arose early and stopped for me. I tucked my trouser-ends in my boots, and went and had a good time. You should have been with us that day round the chowder kettle. I saw the marriage of the trapper in the open air in the far west. The bride was a red girl. Her father and her friends sat cross-legged and dumbly smoking. They had moccasins to their feet, and large thick blankets hanging from their shoulders. On a bank lounged the trapper. He was dressed mostly in skins. His luxuriant beard and curls protected his neck. He held his bride by the hand. She had long lashes. Her head was bare. Her coarse straight locks descended upon her voluptuous limbs and reached to her feet. 
The runaway slave came to my house and stopped outside. I heard his motions crackling the twigs of the woodpile. Through the swung half-door of the kitchen I saw him limpsy and weak, and went where he sat on a log, and led him in, and assured him, and brought water, and filled a tub for his sweated body and bruised feet, and gave him a room that entered from my own, and gave him some coarse clean clothes, and remember perfectly well his revolving eyes and his awkwardness and remember putting plasters on the galls of his neck and ankles. He stayed with me a week before he was recuperated and passed north. I had him sit next to me at table. My firelock leaned in the corner. Section 11 Twenty-eight young men bathed by the shore. Twenty-eight young men and all so friendly. Twenty-eight years of womanly life, and all so lonesome. She owns the fine house by the rise of the bank. She hides handsome and richly dressed, aft the blinds of the window. Which of the young men does she like the best? Ah, the homeliest of them is beautiful to her. Where are you off to, lady? For I see you. You splash in the water there. Yet stay stock still in your room. Dancing and laughing along the beach came the twenty-ninth bather. The rest did not see her, but she saw them and loved them. The beards of the young men glistened with wet. It ran from their long hair. Little streams passed all over their bodies. An unseen hand also passed over their bodies. It descended tremblingly from their temples and ribs. The young men float on their backs. Their white bellies bulge to the sun. They do not ask who seizes fast to them. They do not know who puffs and declines with pendant and bending arch. They do not think who they souse with spray. Section 13 the negro holds firmly the reins of his four horses. The block swags underneath on its tide-over chain. The negro that drives the long dray of the stone-yard, steady and tall, he stands poised on one leg on the string-piece. His blue shirt exposes his ample neck and breast and loosens over his hip-band. His glance is calm and commanding. He tosses the slouch of his hat away from his forehead. The sun falls on his crispy hair and mustache, falls on the black of his polished and perfect limbs. I behold the picturesque giant and love him. I do not stop there. I go with the team also. In me the caresser of life wherever moving, Backward as well as forward slewing, To niches aside and junior bending, Not a person or object missing, Absorbing all to myself and for this song. Oxen that rattle the yoke and chain, Or halt in the leafy shade, What is that you express in your eyes? It seems to me more than all the print I have read in my life. My tread scares the wood-drake and wood-duck on my distant and day-long ramble. They rise together. They slowly circle around. I believe in those winged purposes and acknowledge red, yellow, white playing within me and consider green and violet and the tufted crown intentional and do not call the tortoise unworthy because she is not something else. And the jay in the woods never studied the gamut, yet trills prettily well to me. And the look of the bay mare shames silliness out of me. Section 14 